Are the opposition saying they want to reverse it and they want to see people facing energy bills of £6,000? Is that what he's saying? Mr Speaker, the, the Prime Minister knows very well that on this side we voted against the national insurance in the first place. She, she, she voted for it. So who is doing the U-turn? Honestly. Last week, the Prime Minister was forced to U-turn on her unfunded tax cut for the super wealthy. This week, she's beginning to realise that she needs to extend the windfall tax, one step behind the CEO of Shell. But she's, she's still going ahead with £18 billion of tax cuts for the richest businesses, and they didn't even ask for it. She's still gift-wrapped a stamp duty cut for landlords, just as renters feel the pinch. And she's still holding out tax cuts for those who live off stocks and shares. Why does she expect working people to pick up the bill for her unfunded tax cuts for those at the top? I notice that the Leader of the Opposition is still not saying whether or not he supports our energy price guarantee. This is, this is very relevant, Mr Speaker, because it is the biggest part it is the biggest part of our mini budget. It is the biggest part of the mini budget. The fact is that all the opposition have said is that people should be supported for six months. Does he think that in March pensioners should be facing very high energy bills? Because that is what will happen if he does not support our energy price guarantee. Mr Speaker, not even attempting to answer the questions now. I gently remind her that the idea of freezing energy bills was a Labour idea which she then took on. During her leadership contest, the Prime Minister said, and I quote her exactly, I'm very clear, I'm not planning public spending reductions. Is she going to stick to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr Speaker, we are spending we are spending almost a trillion pounds of public spending. We were spending 700 billion back in 2010. What we will make sure is that over the medium term the debt is falling. But we will do that not by cutting public spending, but by making sure we spend public money well. And the honourable gentleman talks about our spending, which he doesn't seem to support, on the energy price guarantee. But the reality is he can't criticise us on one hand for spending money, on the other hand claiming we're cutting public expenditure. Yes, they can cheer. I hope they listen very, very carefully to that last answer because other people will listen very, very carefully to it. Who voted... uh, Who voted for this? Who voted for this? Who voted for this? Not homeowners paying an extra 500 extra on their mortgages. Who voted this? Not working people paying for tax cuts to the largest companies. Who voted for this? Not even most of the MPs behind her who know, who know you can't pay for tax cuts on the never never. Does she think does she think the public will ever forgive the Conservative Party if they keep on defending this madness and go ahead with a kamikaze budget? Mr Speaker, what our budget has delivered is security fa- security family for families for the next two winters. It's made sure that we're going to see higher economic growth, lower inflation and more opportunities. The way that we will get our country growing is through more jobs, more growth, more opportunities, not through higher taxes, higher spending and his friends in the union stopping hard-working people get to work. 